then they would pass that to the rest of their clan. So then we go through the turtle clan then from that family, the Bagari Harbin family, and the rest of the turtle clan then, and we say, okay, we think this fellow here is gonna make the best chief, so this is the name we would like to stand up. And because in our Confederacy, everyone has a voice. <coughs> everyone has an opportunity to have a say. That's what consensus is about. It's not necessarily that we all agree, but it's that we all have an opportunity to have a voice. And so we would stand, we would take the name of the man that we think is the most qualified to be the chief and we'd give it to the men of our clan. And the reason it goes to them next term, um, in my understanding, is because men know men differently than their mothers and their aunties know them. And they might know things about our sons and nephews that I don't really want to know. <laughs> but it might be important to know because it might mean that he wouldn't be a good chief if it's something not so good. <laughs> so it goes to the men and they counsel about it. And if they agree with us, then it goes to the rest of the Mohawk Nation and they to, to the rest of our community, to the rest of the clans. And, and we all decide together that this person is the best person for the job or not. If when it goes to the men and they say, I don't think he's the best person for this reason, and it has to be a really good reason. It can't just be because I don't like him. It can't be, you know, I don't think he's that great of a guy. It has to be because maybe he was a thief or maybe he's a liar or maybe he's not a good provider for his family. <coughs> it would be something like that that they would say. He's not a good character. He's not an honest person. And I don't think that he would be best. So then if that happens, then the women start all over again. They go, they gather again, and they look at all their male relatives again to see, okay, if it's not gonna be him, then who else do we have that could possibly be the chief? And this goes on until everyone agrees. <laughs> consensus, till we all come to consensus that this is the best person for the job. So as I said, that's how a normal condolence would take place, how a normal, how, how I understand a chief would normally be chosen. So this, we don't know how this came about, the event that happened 100 years ago. All we know is that we have a list of nine chiefs and nine sub-chiefs and two who we think are clan mothers, because women are very rarely um, indicated in the documents that we find. And so there are two women's names, and we believe them to be clan mothers because the clan mothers would stand up with the chief. Because usually when you stand a chief up, when you, when you condole him, there is a chief, and then he has a sub-chief, and there's a clan mother that puts him up, so they all go together, as well as the, the ceremony keeper. Um, they all stand together in that. So that clan title has all those people affiliated with it. They're all part of that title. And that's for all of the nine titles of the Mohawk. So what we know is that nine chiefs and nine sub-chiefs were installed on September 21st, 100 years ago. And these are the names that we have displayed today and pictures that we have displayed here. And as I said, these names were installed in the traditional council, not an elected band council. So it would have been a process, I believe, if all things are right in the world, that it would have been a similar process to what I had described about how condolence would, and that it starts with the women. So women are very important in our culture, in our way of life, because, because we give life. And we all follow our mother's line. Your, your clan comes from your mother. You're born into your clan. I'm Turtle Clan because my mother was Turtle Clan and her mother was Turtle Clan and my sisters are Turtle Clan and my children are Turtle Clan, but I have sons. So my sons are Turtle Clan, which under the law means that they can't marry another Turtle Clan person because that's like marrying your sister. So they're, theoretically, they should marry a, someone that's not a turtle, like a bear or a wolf. And then my grandchildren will have the clan of their mother don't take, necessarily take the clan of their father, they take the clan of their mother. Because things have, have happened and changed so much in all of our communities though, in the Longhouse now, when people come who may not be born with a clan, we look at who their relatives are and we look at who their closest female relative is with a clan and sometimes that's their father's mother. So 
allowances are made that they can sit there. It doesn't mean they have a clan. It means they sit under the protection of that clan and that means that they have a place to sit and they have a place to be engaged and they have a place to belong if they choose to come to the law. So and there are a series of ceremonies that can take place. Um, a lot of communities do adoptions. We don't really do adoptions here in Cayetanega. Um, but that, yeah, that's how we sit people who may not be born in the clan. Um, when you talk about adoption, okay, I think we all need to understand that the Europeans stopped us from doing that, okay, because he felt threatened that if what he thought is if we permit them to go on adopting, they're going to have all of the population and we're going to lose our population, okay. So strength-wise, we'll be too strong. So they, they prohibited us from adopting uh, non-Indians <coughs> into our politics, okay? So that's important to remember because there, there are some people that stand the line that, no, you can't adopt, okay? That comes from U.S. and Canada law, okay? History, that, that uh, they don't want that to happen. But where we stand today as a people, our history, has come this far because of one thing. And I'll say it in English, but it doesn't mean that. It means, in English it's fire, okay? Because of our fire. It's not a physical fire uh, with wood or coal or fuel. Okay? You are the fire, okay? You are one log in our fire. That's the way it's explained, okay? So the more logs that we have in our family fire, the stronger that family is supposed to be. The more logs you have in a clan fire, the stronger that clan is. The nation, if we have a lot of logs in that fire, we got a big bonfire, right? And you're not gonna stand too close to the fire because it's too hot, right? Because it's so strong. See, that's, that's the way our ancestors thought, okay? Our language is made that way. It's all descriptive. But when we use English in explaining what she just explained, it loses a lot of strength, okay? It's like she mentioned, uh, putting up the chiefs. Ruyane and Yaboyane, okay? It doesn't mean chiefs. And it's important to understand that because the Hoi man understands that word in a different uh, definition than we do. And he's going to use his. So it's important that we understand a person in that position in the traditional sense is a royan. And the person that has the authority to approach him to take him out of office is Yaboyan. Okay. That's the woman. In our culture, the woman has a lot to say. They have a lots of authority. But when the white man got here again, he worked hard to put it into the male and take that strength away from our women. And that's why we start falling apart. Our families were starting to get separated because now our grandmothers were no longer listened to the way they used to be. Our mothers and our aunts were no longer listened to the way they used to be. It was like their word was law <laughs> back in the day, you know? Today, you see the little kids telling their grandma, hey, I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> you know, they tell their mother that too, see? It, it starts all the way right from that one piece of wood in that fire. We have to keep, uh, what is that when you stir the fire? You stoke the fire? Yeah, we have to keep that alive. So we have to keep our culture alive in those young kids so that when they reach an age where we can 
put them in position. I use this a lot today. Our men start maturing at 40 years old. Okay? In the Massachusetts area, there's a book of Philip Ward. He was 13 years old. He was leading his people. And, he, and they wrote a book about him because the colonists were amazed at how wise a person he was. Uh, how he knew the territory. How he, he represented his people so well for a young person. And today, can we do that? Can we do that? That's not their fault. That's society's fault in taking the power away from the mother and father. You can't discipline your children today. They'll send you to jail. The child can call the police and the police will put you in jail. That's to break down your family authority. You see? And it all leads up to where we are today and what Obama just talked about. We have to give up our freedoms so that we can be part of a world order so that that world order can take all your resources. See, that's how they're thinking. Our ancestors were thinking, how do we stay strong as a family so that we can keep feeding our families in the Confederacy, in our country, using our resources? not all the GMO products that the European is putting on our table. You see, he's slowly poisoning us and we're accepting it because we don't have wall-to-wall -wall gardens here of our natural foods, okay? Our clan system, our constitution was meant to strengthen us as a people. It has a lot of ways in the three to four hundred years that we had contact with the European it has kept us together we argue all of the time we fight all of the time but we have to look at where does that all come from who puts that seed into our clans to make us argue about different issues the simplest issue we can't come to a consensus Consensus is something that you can live with. It may not be perfect, but you can live with it. And the mistake that we make as a people in the clan is if we realize it's a mistake, then it's our responsibility to bring it back up in a clan and then revisit it in council so that they can look at it again and tweak it to a point where we can live with it today. Yeah.